Hi, very good morning. I'm Dr. Janak Patel, MD physician. I'm not a cardiologist. I'm still a student. Whatever I'm learning, whatever I'm gathering, knowledge from internet, different websites, etc. I'll be sharing with you. Today we'll be talking on general idea regarding a cyanotic congenital heart disease. So meaning is very simple. Disease is congenital, means presence right since birth. It is involving heart, so it is congenital heart disease and it is with cyanosis, so cyanotic congenital heart disease. Or the second word utilized is right to left shunt, means deoxygenated blood from right side, that is from right atrium or right ventricle, is entering into left side. So deoxy blood is going to left side, that is LA or LV or into aorta. So those are called as cyanotic congenital heart disease or we also call as cyanotic heart disease. But in cyanotic heart disease, we will have to put what we call as acquired and congenital. So this is a typical cyanosis which you can see here. So we are going to discuss today on that particular topic. It is all cyanotic. You can see she is having cyanosis plus clubbing. So this has to be since long time. So we will be discussing under this common heading. Already we are, de we are dealing with all these headings in each lecture. So it is a congenital disorders manifested by right to left shunt. Meaning deoxy blood is entering into left side before it gets oxygenated. Resulting into diminished blood flow because less blood goes to lung and as less blood goes to lung there will be diminished blood flow and permitting unoxygenated or we call desaturated or deoxyhemoglobin entering into systemic circulation those conditions and if they are congenital then we call as a cyanotic congenital heart disease or congenital cyanotic heart disease whichever way you want to pronounce and good number of time they are associated with clubbing because of hypoxia. What is cyanosis? We have already told you before that it is a bluish discoloration of mucus and skin membrane visible when arterial oxygenation saturation falls below 60 to 65. But better way if there is a reduced hemoglobin or we call deoxyhemoglobin more than 5 gram circulating in a arterial blood. So in presence of anemia it will be extremely difficult because person cannot survive. Physiological cyanosis may be normal till 20 minutes but beyond that it will be always abnormal. We divide basically into two groups, central cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis. We know that peripheral cyanosis is because of normal arterial oxygenation, but because of the poor perfusion, peripheral cyanosis will take place. It is because of sluggish perfusion, while central cyanosis is because of desaturated hemoglobin entering into LA or LV, and that will produce central cyanosis, maybe because of many conditions like external environment, high altitude or because of lung conditions or because of R2L stunts, etc. So those are different words, central cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis, one of the example of peripheral cyanosis, hypothermia, Reynolds phenomena, severe congestive heart failure, 
or we call left ventricular failure mixed cyanosis will come across classical in case of severe congestive heart failure with shock stage differential cyanosis classical in case of pda with reversal of the shunt and reverse differential cyanosis will be very common if the person is having transposition of great arteries with pda with reversal so in that condition it will be there intermittent cyanosis once in a while you come across in case of extern anomaly circumoral cyanosis is very common in a newborn children cyclical cyanosis is seen in patient with bilateral coronal atresia now there is one simple test which will help you to differentiate between primary pulmonary hypertension which produces cyanosis and congenital heart disease or we call cyanotic heart disease so when you give 100% oxygen for 5 to 10 minutes and if po2 increases more than 150 will exclude straight forward cyanotic heart disease so if po2 is more than 300 and pco2 is normal it is straight forward normal person but if po2 is more than 150 and pco2 is high meaning there is a carbon dioxide retention hypercarbia it is more in favor of lung disease and if po2 is less than 50 and pco2 is normal cardiac disease and in case of pulmonary primary pulmonary hypertension po2 is less than 100 and pco2 is normal roughly this will be holding true so if you look at the po2 and pco2 it will help you a lot so in a lung disease you will always have hypercarbia but in cardiac and primary pulmonary hypertension pco2 will be normal so just have a look at that and po2 will be person will be more hypoxic in cardiovascular disorders where person develops severe congestive heart failure and second primary pulmonary hypertension and then comes lung disease so if you just remember this this will help you a lot so this is also called as a hyper hyperoxia hyperventilation test so you hyperventilate with manual resuscitate and give 100% oxygen until pco2 reaches 20 to 25 and with hyperventilation alkalosis will occur there will be pulmonary vasodilatation secondary to pulmonary vasodilatation if pao2 is equal to 100 with hyperventilation it is more in favor of primary pulmonary hypertension but if po2 remains less than 100 it rules out congenital heart disease so this is one test which you can utilize in a newborn to differentiate between congenital heart disease and primary pulmonary hypertension but better is this test this is very easy if you give 100% oxygen for 5 to 10 minutes and if po2 improves and it becomes more than 150 normally it is less than 50 because of congenital cyanotic heart disease and now if it becomes more than 150 then it straight forward rules out cyanotic heart disease so this is a most simple test which will help you to differentiate between congenital cyanotic heart disease and primary pulmonary hypertension now classification of cyanotic heart disease we can divide into two big groups increase pulmonary blood flow and decrease pulmonary blood flow and some where there is a mixed defect where there is a common blood flow into pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation so we can divide into two big groups decrease blood flow increase pulmonary blood flow and with that if we add rvh and lvh if there is a decreased pulmonary blood flow with rvh the first possibility is tetralogy of fellow pulmonary atresia with vsd critical pulmonary stenosis or dorv with pulmonary stenosis or transposition of great vessels with vsd and pulmonary stenosis so in all this group you will have a rvh 
while LVH will be more commonly seen in tricuspid atresia or pulmonary atresia with interventricular septal defects. So in this particular condition, you will have LVH. While increased blood flow with RVH, you will get in case of transposition of great vessels or great arteries, total anomalous pulmonary venous return, DORV or hypoplastic left heart syndrome and you will have a biventricular, both ventricle being hypertrophy or basically it is called a common ventricle that is RV and LV is common and that will happen in a truncus arteriosus. So you can divide cyanotic heart disease with decreased pulmonary blood supply that is decreased blood supply with RVH, LVH we already mentioned and with combined ventricular hypertrophy already that has been mentioned here. So these are the different conditions. Whatever we have mentioned before in this slide same thing is nearly repeated here. At your leisure time you can go through. This is with increased vascularity RVH and LVH we already mentioned before. This is with increased blood flow we already mentioned that increased blood flow will be there if there is a common blood entering from ventricular chamber into pulmonary circulation and what we call as systemic circulation. But more in pulmonary like transposition of great vessels, truncus arteriosus, total or partial anomalous of pulmonary venous return, single ventricle, double outlet, right ventricle or left side hypoplastic heart syndrome. These are all common conditions which will have an increased blood flow and mixed blood defect will be very common in transposition of great vessel, total anomalous pulmonary venous connections, hypoplastic whether right ventricle or left ventricle in those conditions. We already mentioned regarding a decreased pulmonary blood flow like fellows tetralogy, tricuspid atresia, abstinent anomaly, pulmonary atresia with VSD, right side hypoplastic heart syndrome. This is combined together. Etiology wise we have already mentioned in a previously in a congenital heart disease that is by and large it is idiopathic we cannot identify the cause it is multifactorial it can be genetic it can be environmental and again in environmental mental, maternal factors particularly German measles rubella infection in first trimester uncontrolled diabetes mellitus lupus or drugs like sodium valproate, dilantin or we call as a diphenyl hydrogenate sodium, lithium or other teratogenic drugs and some of the congenital cuts, even smoking, alcohol, halidomides, etc. can also predispose to. Among genetic conditions there are some genetic disorders, very commonly Down syndromes or we call trisomy 15, 18, 21, those particular groups quite common. Among these congenital cyanotic heart disease, we come across cyanotic heart disease only in 22 percent while our cyanotic is more common like VSD, ASD, PDA. VSD is most common. Among cyanotic heart disease, tetralogy of fellow is more common. It is accounting for nearly 5 percent. While other cyanotic heart disease group like truncus arteriosus, transposition of great vessels, total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, they are 1 to 2 percent. So those are less common. You can see here tetralogy of fellow is nearly 5 percent, transposition of great arteries is 5 percent and others hardly, it is not mentioned here, it is 1 percent. Pathophysiology is very simple. Because of right to left shunt, deoxygenated blood from right side will enter into left side. Now because of this chronic hypoxia, you will have an increase production of erythropoietin which will give rise to stimulation of bone marrow, producing more number of RBC, producing polycythemia and because of chronic hypoxia, you will have a clubbing. Now if a person develops infective endocarditis, 
or any thrombus. Now, clot instead of entering from RARV into pulmonary, it may enter through that right to left shunt either because of ASD, or sorry, not ASD, tetralogy of fellow or truncus arteriosus or maybe say transposition of great vessels, etc. <coughs> you will have a paradoxical thromboembolism. Because of chronic hypoxia, the child will have a decreased appetite and growth retardation. Now, secondary to all these things, the right ventricular pressure will be elevated because right ventricle will have to do more work. And secondary to that, now person will start developing right ventricular dysfunction and in the end stage, person will go into what we call as congestive cardiac failure. But in case of tricuspid atresia or Epstein anomaly, the blood flow from RA will directly enter into LA where RV chamber will not be much affected. Usually it is hypoplastic. Pulmonary artery is usually hypoplastic. In those particular conditions, you will have a blood flow from RA to LA from LA to LV. Now, either because of VSD, blood from LV will come to RV and then enter into pulmonary circulation or via PDA. From aorta, it will go into pulmonary circulation, gets oxygenated and then comes back to LA. So, that will what will happen in a case of a tricuspid atresia, Epstein anomaly, that particular group. Now, in case of pulmonary, severe pulmonary stenosis, or pulmonary atresia, blood from RV cannot enter into pulmonary circulation. So either through VSD, the blood will enter into LV, from LV into aorta, and from aorta via PDA into pulmonary circulation, gets oxygenated, comes back to L. Very frequently with pulmonary atresia and type pulmonary stenosis, there is VS. So these are the pathophysiology which will be taking place in cyanotic heart disease. This is, I've already explained in a previous lecture, what is normal fetal circulation. In a congenital cyanotic heart disease, these are the examples, tetralogy of fellow, transposition of great vessels, truncus arteriosus, tricuspid atresia, etc where you have got a right to left shunt, deoxygenated blood from right side will enter into left side and that because of that now you develop deoxy hemoglobin producing hypoxia, cyanosis, secondary to cyanosis and chronic hypoxia. Now person will develop clubbing because of chronic hypoxia, appetite is lost, cachexia, stunted growth, delayed milestones. And secondary to polycythemia, you will develop hyperviscosity syndrome because of shunt or because of congenital defects. There is always a chance of thromboembolism and infective endocarditis. You will have more of RV enlargement or you might also have a LV in certain cases. RV will be more common in case of say tetralogy of fellow, pulmonary stenosis with VSD, in those particular group, we have already given you a one slide before. So in that case, you will have a more of RV. And in that case, you will have a right parasternal heave. You will have a RVH signs. While in case of other anomalies, like tricuspid atresia, Epstein anomaly, LV will be more. Because more blood is coming to left ventricle. So in those conditions, you will have more of LV. Depending upon the severity of hypoxia, person can develop even a cyanotic spoil, central cyanosis, mental retardation, and then person will have a very high chance of having a high mortality. So that will be the pathophysiology. This is a very simple, we have already explained. Now, because of increased pulmonary blood flow in some condition, in left to, this is, sorry, this is left to right shunt. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is left to right shunt leading to what we call as Isermenger syndromes and then you get reversal of the shunt. 
so this is left to right shunt sorry so this is difference between left to right shunt and right to left shunt we have already discussed in a congenital cyanotic heart disease lecture so we divide into two big groups cyanotic and acyanotic and third group is we call stenotic groups in right to left shunt there are certain clinical findings which will be there very commonly if there is an increased blood flow because of increased pulmonary blood flow there is a little amount of oxygenation which is taking place so person will have usually mild cyanosis increased sweating early congestive cardiac failure plethora cardiomegaly particularly more of what we call as a little amount of rv the common condition which will produce increased blood flow is transposition of great vessels single ventricle total anomalous or partial anomalous of pulmonary venous return etc even in case of tricuspid atresia in all this condition you can have a increased blood flow sorry in tricuspid it should not be sorry sorry no decreased pulmonary blood flow is very common in case of classical example pulmonary stenosis with vsd or pilot tetralogy where invariably person will have a moderate to severe cyanosis there will be p2 loud or diminished sorry p2 will be less while in case of increased blood flow there will be p2 will be loud early systolic murmur in pulmonary hypertension p2 may become loud and palpable also usually because of decreased pulmonary blood flow oligemic pulmonary lung fail classical example we have already given you tetralogy of fellow pulmonary atresia total anomalous truncus arteriosus total anomalous pulmonary venous return etc so in general person will have a central cyanosis clubbing shriveled cry delayed milestone tachycardia tachypnea severe hypoxia because of cyanosis retarded growth cachexia repeated respiratory tract infection will be more common with increased blood flow precordial deformity because of either rv or lv murmur pulmonary congestion congestive heart failure other malformation will be there because of congenital chromosomal abnormality disorders person may be particularly female during pregnancy may have rubella or maybe on some teratogenic drugs or radiation or severe hypoxia or uncontrolled diabetes smoking alcohol it is also called as a fetal alcohol syndromes there may be a strong family history of congenital heart disease which will be more in favor of straight forward we call as a chromosomal abnormalities so there is a lot of symptoms which will be present in child failure to thrive exercise intolerance easy fatigability sweating blue spell fever with rigor palpitation convulsions edema hepatosplenomegaly clubbing cyanosis even a child can have a focal neurological lesions because of thromboembolic phenomena etc so cyanosis is very common feature with clubbing in case of fellow stratology hypoxic spell or cyanotic spell or tick spell etc clubbing polycythemia murmur will be very common volume overload will be very commonly seen in left to right shunt like vsd asd and pda and in that case after reversal of the shunt you will develop cyanosis so cyanosis will develop very late these are the typical finding you will have a cyanosis clubbing you will have a cyanosis clubbing you can see there is a central cyanosis clearly you can see bluish and in a person with a chromosomal abnormality or a genetic disorders good number of time you will see some congenital anomalies if a person comes to you with 
congenital cyanotic heart disease or cyanotic congenital heart disease with severe congestive heart failure child might have a shock like symptoms mixed cyanosis congestive symptoms exercise intolerance chest pain syncopal episodes seizures fainting episodes or even they might have airway obstruction dysphagia etc anoxic spell is much more common in a tetralogy of fellow sometime you can come across also cardiac arrhythmias occasionally you can come across with paradoxical embolization and involving brain clubbing and cyanosis is quite common and polycythemia may produce hyperviscosity syndrome so depending upon some clue you can come to a nearmost diagnosis so these are some useful clue if you are interested go through your at least a time this is how you approach to a child how you take a history what are the symptoms what are the possibilities those are given say a child comes to you with a syncopal episodes tetralogy of fellow isermenger is more common hemoptysis isermenger syndrome is more common cough dyspnea repeated chest infection total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage transposition of great vessels truncus arteriosus will be more common means with increased blood flow convulsions more common with tetralogy of fellow with paradoxical embolization if you see cyanosis clubbing and polycythemia and if there is an increased blood flow these are the possibility that is transposition of great vessels truncus arteriosus single ventricle total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage but see the percentage 1 to 2% only hypoplastic left heart but decreased blood flow tetralogy of fellow is much more common tricuspid atresia epsin anomaly pulmonary atresia that is very very common so cyanosis during newborn first week after one month etc these are the different possibilities sex wise equal in both in female endocardial cushion defects are more common in male single ventricle transposition of great vessels hypoplastic left heart is more common than female general examination look for different anomaly endocardial cushion defects d george syndrome these are some of the marfan syndromes what are more common if jvp is elevated more in favor of tricuspid atresia hypoplastic left heart left ventricle total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage those are more common or double outlet right ventricle with increased pulmonary blood flow transposition of great arteries etc if pulse is collapsing means it is wide pulse pressure or there is a high volume pulse truncus arteriosus av malformations severe tet severe tetralogy of fellow with collaterals etc these are lot of conditions pre precordial examination if there is a bulge and there is a right ventricular heave it will be more favor of pulmonary stenosis with intact interventricular septum or with transposition of great arteries total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage hypoplastic left ventricle so right ventricle will be dominant these are the auscultatory finding which will help you so go through your at least a time this is how on x ray x shape it will be more in favor of transposition of great vessels figure 8 trans total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage square shape truncus arteriosus boot shape tetralogy of fellow box shape or almost we call as massive enlargement of uh, cardiomegaly epstein anomaly a big ra more in favor of pulmonary atresia or trunk or tricuspid atresia tricuspid atresia and pulmonary atresia
in those condition it will be more in favor i think even in case of an epstein anomaly also you will have a large ra ra is so big that you get almost box shape it is this way so these are all the different conditions if you come across squatting or we call cyanotic spells quiet precordium decreased pulmonary blood flow chances of tetralogy of fallo trun truncus arteriosus sorry tricuspid atresia ta will be for tricuspid atresia pulmo uh, pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum if child has got congestive cardiac failure what are the possibility pulmonary edema what are the possibility and if towards normal what are the possibility cyanosis if it is there you can go for hypoxic test and you can do what we call as cardiovascular evaluation x ray test eco ecg to rule out the congenital cyanotic heart disease echocardiography how it will help you to rule out duct dependent duct independent etc ventricular dominance we have already mentioned before in a previous slides if right ventricular is dominant if left ventricular is dominant what are the possibilities so basic investigation is most important part is a good history physical examination cardiovascular system examination family history as far as investigation is concerned ecg eco and x ray test holds true to finally confirm the diagnosis catheterization can be done or you can utilize ct and mri combined with catheter studies so these are some of the radiological we already mentioned boat shape heart and large heart snowman appearance figure 8 appearance etc these are all the different boot shape wall to wall if it is wall to wall 100% epstein anomaly agon and appearance total anomalous of pulmonary array what we call as a great vessels this is on ecg if there is a rad what are the possible rad lae r right atrial enlargement rvh lvh right bundle branch block pattern etc what are the possibilities at your leisure time you can go through once you diagnose a congenital heart disease and if it is there is a cyanosis now you have to clinically evaluate whether the person has got congestive heart failure yes or no if the person has got congestive heart failure then have a fluid restriction diuretic bed rest oxygen is necessary but oxygen may improve in some condition may not give a good results in other by and large if the person who has got a severe pulmonary atresia in those condition oxygenation may not give a good results finally you require a surgical intervention either open heart surgery or a minimal invasive surgery or a catheter intervention so because of congenital heart disease and if there is a clubbing with cyanosis and if hypoxia is severe enough anoxic spell or tax spell because of right to left shunt paradoxical embolization in good number of condition because of a severe right ventricular pressure elevation right ventricular hypertrophy right ventricular dysfunction person goes into congestive cardiac failure and sometime person can have even a con congestive heart failure clubbing cyanotic spell depressed iq infective endocarditis chances polycythemia secondary to polycythemia hyperviscosity syndrome thromboembolic phenomena paradoxical embolization all these are quite common and mortality rate will be very high in some of the severe variety of right to left shunts this was a general idea regarding a congenital cyanotic heart disease or we call cyanotic congenital heart disease so i will end my lecture here i hope this will be beneficial to understand the subsequent lecture on cyanotic heart disease